welcome to mystery textile of the week so here we have a swatch of a textile here the point of this game is to try and identify the swatch based off of the information i give you there will be different levels of hardness of uh, how you want to play whether you are very experienced at this or are learning stuff from brand new I will be giving you uh, more and more information and uh, hints as we go through. So let's start off with, uh, this is our mystery textile. Some of you may recognize it more or less as is right this second, but it's kind of hard to tell some of the properties quite yet. Uh, this one will probably give it away for some. This is a crush test. So you crush it up in your palm for a short period of time and then release it and see what it does. In this case, the creases stay quite dramatically. Uh, you can see here all of those very crisp wrinkles from just being clasped in the hand. That's pretty telling as far as a fiber goes. Uh, we're going to do a burn test here in a minute. And um, for your burn test, you're going to want to do this safely. So remove all pets from the area, a non-flammable surface. There you go. And because I want to do other tests to this as well, I'm going to cut off a small chunk. You don't want to hold on to this with your fingers, as this is an unknown textile. Uh, although some of you probably are starting to guess at this point. Um, you're going to want to have something to hold it in your fingers, away from your fingers, in case it tends to light up very quickly, like an acetate. To also light it on fire, you butane torch, like one of these guys, that's pretty awesome. Um, if you're doing a whole bunch of them, especially. Um, but, since we're just doing one, I need a big lighter this time around. I cannot find my tweezers right this second. We're going massively overkill with a pair of nips, and we're going to look at this. Um, I'm going to turn the lights down a bit, so they're a little bit easier to see. We have our textile here. We've got a little flame here. There we go. So what you can notice there is that it didn't pull back uh, at all from the flame. Um, it didn't melt or curl away as it was approaching it. I'm going to look at that again. But it did light on fire. It burns fairly slowly. But doesn't self-extinguish. I'm going to turn the light on. It smells a little bit like a very sweet paper as it's burning. Um, and that's, you know, fairly telling as well. So we've got this very soft edge here. The ash itself down here is a light gray and very smooth and soft, no hard beads whatsoever. It's, it's a kind of feathery feeling, very light and fluffy ash. Here we can see this mystery textile under 10 times magnification. You can see the yarn a little bit more clearly now, as well as the structure of the weave very close up. You can see not a whole lot of short ends for the staple fibers. Fairly long ends, fairly long fiber. We can also see how shiny it is, which leads us to think potentially about some of its finishes. Considering how much light is being reflected, I wonder if in the finishes, this may have had an optical whitening added to it. This textile does not dissolve in a 100% solution of acetic acid. Nor does it dissolve in 100% acetone at 20 degrees Celsius. Nor does it dissolve at a 20% concentration of hydrochloric acid. 
or 5% solution of sodium hypochlorite. nor in 100% xylene at 139 degrees Celsius, or even in 100% dimethyl formamide at 90 degrees Celsius, what finally gets it to completely dissolve. This textile has very poor thermal retention, which makes it great for summer wearing. This textile has good abrasion resistance. This textile has good light resiliency. This fiber has medium tenacity and holds 3.5 grams per denier when dry and 5 to 6.5 grams per denier when wet is the only fiber that gets stronger when it's wet. As you can see while I'm pulling on it here, it has very low elasticity and resiliency is fairly low. It crimps quite easily. This textile has a very high absorbency rate, being able to absorb up to 12% in weight gain and has a high density with a 1.52 specific gravity. So here is the yarn under 100 times magnification can kind of start to see the fibers nodules on there. I've also pulled out a bit of the fiber for us to look at as well. But So here we can pretty plainly see the S structure to the yarn as well as some of the nodules of the fiber itself. The fiber is a bast fiber obtained from the stem of the plant in this case, although bast can also apply to the root now, fibers derived from the root. You can see that it doesn't have a whole lot of ends sticking out of it. It's a fairly long, staple fiber. And we'll look at just the fibers themselves alone in just a second here. All right, so here is a separated fiber, uh, specifically from pulling apart the yarns of this particular mystery textile. You can see a node there which is fairly telling as to what the fiber content is. You can kind of see the structured shape of it as well, although we'll go into that a little bit more. This is a very smooth looking fiber, not a lot of uh, texture to it, but it does have more texture than, say, a, a monofilament. Here's a quick sketch of what a node sometimes looks like, even under uh, closer inspection. And if we were to look at a cross-section of an untreated fiber, the little sketch that I made here on the left, where it has a hard exterior and soft fibers are closer to the interior of the stock. To go even smaller, for those of you who are massive chemistry nerds, here's the chemical composition of this particular fiber. Mm -hmm. 